What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and whatever time it is, and welcome back to yet another video with your man, Immersure-holic. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our faction overview series for the Tavaric Tempera Oval mod for Total War Room 2. Today we are checking out the Lusitani. That's right, we're going back to Iberia. I know we did say we were going to the African and possibly Arabian nations, but because they are getting new units in the upcoming uh, DEI update, I've pushed that back a little bit for now, so instead, for preparation for our head-to-head -head campaign that is coming on the channel very soon, in case you missed that announcement, your boy Emergeholic is going to be playing as the Lusitani against my good friend Toxborg playing as the Nervii, so in preparation for that, we will be checking out the Lusitani. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into it. First up, we are part of the Iberi culture, of course. We share the following perks with the Aravachi and the Editani. We have the Horsemanship perk, which gives us plus one experience rank for all Cav units. And then we have the Devotio perk, which gives us increased attributes for all generals. First perk is nice. Second perk, I haven't really noticed to be all that noticeable in um, my Lusitani campaign so far. And in my other test campaign, so... I would kind of like this to maybe be a little bit more powerful or stand out a little bit more perhaps. Or what could be cool is seeing some unique um, traits or something be given to the generals, but I'm not even sure if that's possible. Anyway though, moving forward to just the Lusitani buffs and debuffs, we have the attack and retreat buff which gives us increased army movement range. Could be a very powerful buff. Uh, it's always nice to have a lot of movement on your armies, it gives you a lot more options, especially when you need to outmaneuver the enemy. Uh, we then have the Mountain Fighters perk, which gives us increased morale in mountains and hills, which is perfect because Iberia is covered in all of those. And then we have the Rampant Outlaws debuff, which is a little bit harsh. It increases banditry, and banditry can be a very big problem, and it can cut into certain provinces if you don't manage it correctly. Um, and so, basically, it can cut into your income very heavily for a random turn it can even happen multiple times in a row or it could also cut into your agriculture so we do need to be careful about this increased banditry debuff but anyway now let's jump into the part one section of this video where we'll check out the situation for the lusitani alrighty ladies and gentlemen here we are checking out the campaign situation for the lusitani we start off with one city we are a one hitter quitter again we have the city of elisipo which is the capital of Lusitania. Uh, you only have two cities in this very small province, though, so that's a little rough, although your capital is the capital of the region, and it also is a naval city, as you can see, so you can get trade with uh, almost anybody at the beginning of the game, so that will help you out with your economy, help you get started, maybe send uh, some traders north, or send them down this way into the Mediterranean, and you'll get a lot of agreements flowing through your capital. Um, but you then have one army led by your king. Um, he only has three other units besides his bodyguard though, so you might want to uh, try to fix that as soon as you can. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the units later on though. And then we have one spy, which is over here in Turdetania by the city of Kartuba. Uh, I'm not sure why it's all the way over here. That's a fair distance away. But anyway, the, main, the first thing you're probably going to want to is send them back west to Abora because you have to get to Abora to get to, to uh, Kartuba if you do even wish to go that way but that is probably what you'll end up doing but anyway now the next point which is that your diplomacy is kind of rough in the beginning but it gets better as time goes on so let's check it out straight up you have no relations with anybody whatsoever and you are surrounded entirely by other one hit or quitter factions so this is good and bad it's bad because it means that most of your allies uh, will be pretty ready for conflict. A lot of the time the one hitters often end up fighting each other and you. So it, it basically means Iberia will blow up into a bit of a complete mess in regards to the wars. So you probably won't be getting too many allies. You should be able to get one if you can time your declare, declaration of war right. Say, for example, the Aravachi and the Carpatani declare war on each other. Uh, you can offer one to join the war and then they'll probably be pretty grateful for that. So it's up to you if you want to do that. However, my general advice is avoid diplomacy pretty much entirely for the first 30 or so turns. Um, almost entirely at least. You might want to get a non-aggression pact with say the Galici up here to your north. 
or you come on down south take out the Keltichi, uh, the Turdetani and then the others. But then once you take those out, come back up, swallow up the Galichi, and then do the same thing uh, wherever you need it, basically. You want non-aggression packs in directions that you don't uh, plan to attack for the foreseeable future. And despite you being actually neutral with pretty much all of your factions except the uh, Cantabri, you will get random declarations of war based off of this and based off the fact that you don't have any relations with anybody. Furthermore, we have to talk about Carthage. Carthage over here is, again, neutral with you. They don't have any relations with you. It is possible to try and get some, although they're a large, powerful faction, so often they're actually Your not even interested. So right now, turn one, they don't even want a trade agreement with us. We might be able to get it if we pay them, but the bottom line is, is that Carthage is generally going to be hostile towards you unless you help them out uh, with a lot of money or you need to help them in their wars. And they have territory down here. And then uh, over here as well, they have the two cities, I believe, was there a third? No, they have the Balearic Islands over here. So they have two cities in Iberia on turn one, then they have northern Morocco, and then uh, obviously they have the whole North African coastline just about. But we will talk a little bit more about how to handle Carthage and Rome later on, but I did just want to make you aware that early on, they're not all that friendly and they do have territory just a couple provinces away, so be very careful of that. Next up, your economy. Your economy is that of a barbarian, so it's going to be fairly low to mid tier. Um, however, you do have some pretty powerful provinces. Your first province sucks because you only have the two cities, although Ibora does have iron, so that's super useful. Use it to make money, get trade, and upgrade your units if you want. Uh, but then uh, the province of Baetica is actually fairly decent for agriculture, as is the province of. Where is it? of Hispania. Hispania is a massive province, has four cities in it, it's very large. Um, three of which are coastal settlements, so Marcia, uh, Ars, and Ibosum. Numancia is an inland city up here and it has copper. So you have quite a few resources available in the area, um, but anyway, you do have copper and iron at the very least, so you can get your uh, trade economy going fairly quickly, especially if you do what I said, send out like a single admiral to go get you some trade agreements uh, with people all throughout the Mediterranean that will really help you uh, get your economy rolling there. But besides that, your agriculture is going to be trade based and agricultural based probably. Unless you really want to try to specialize in industry, but that's up to you if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it, um, at least not in Iberia until you start expanding a little bit further. So the next major point is of course to talk about the population. The city of Elispo has only 20,000 people on turn 1. 2,300 of which are warriors, 12,000 are freemen. This is actually decent, it's not too bad. A lot of your units early on come from the freemen class, such as these Lusitani light warriors, and you'll be wanting to use these guys a lot early on because they're actually very useful and they have guerrilla deployment. Uh, your axemen are warriors though, but I believe the rest of your units are all from uh, the freemen or the foreigners class. And that even includes your baggage change, so yeah, it's not bad at all. Your mercenaries are different though. Um, they come from the elites. This is the Lus Lusitani mercenary cab, so they should be elite. They're very good, very, very powerful. Um, then you have some foreigner units, so and a warrior unit. So basically, in your first 10 or so turns, population shouldn't be an issue at all. You should be able to recruit a full army, maybe even two, and go off, go north, or go to a boar and go uh, east if you want to. However, it kind of has a bit of a domino effect after that, whereas once you start taking these towns right here, basically any town in Iberia, even the ones held by Carthage, uh, Marcia, and then over here, I think it's Gadir is what it's called? Yeah. Uh, once you even take those cities, you will have massive amounts of population available because the majority of Iberia belongs to the Iberian culture. And so when you do take over these cities, a lot of them will uh, end up basically joining your armies and you shouldn't really even have issues from public order because of that your culture should be the dominant one in the area so the bottom line is is that population shouldn't be a problem at all throughout your campaign really uh you really have to mismanage to kind of screw that up so that really gives you a massive plus in terms of difficulty and just a couple little points before we move on your king starts off quite old at 47 um that's fairly old for the time period. It means that he's not going to be making all that many kids either. 
So that is going to be a concern for you if you do want to um, get more heirs and whatever for your kingdom. Get him married as soon as possible and then try to get, uh, well, try to hope, I guess, that he gets busy and has some sons coming up uh, very soon. So hopefully you can get that going there. And then another thing to take into account is, of course, ambushes. Iberia is perfect for ambushes. There are abs there's an insane amount of choke points everywhere. Right here is a choke point. He, he. And then it's like it goes just all the way through all of Iberia. And then you have the uh, mountains up here, which can help deal with um, stopping the uh, other Celts and Gauls from coming in, the Romans who will end up coming in along the coastline as well. You have a really perfect defensive position. However, I really can't stress enough how much you will need to use ambushes to defeat the bigger factions like Carthage and Rome. Carthage, maybe not as much, but still it will help you massively, especially against air elephants. You'll be able to wipe them quickly. The Romans, you will have to use the ambush tactics as much as possible. Get your armies just on the edge of these forests. That's all you have to do. On the move, lads. Put them in the ambush stance. And immediately, this unit has a 71% chance of getting an ambush. That's a very high percentage. It means it probably will, in fact, get the ambush correct. And now it's actually 86% for some reason. So there you go. Not bad at all. Get those ambushes happening and you'll be able to take on very elite armies from other people. However, ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of all I have to say about the campaign. At least before we start talking about hints and tips. Uh, you have a very small starting position, fairly simple. Your economy is going to be pretty meh, uh, but it can kind of steamroll and uh, grow into something that's going to be quite powerful, especially once you get all of Iberia and you get a lot of trade flowing. The main thing is that you need to be careful on when you end up fighting Carthage. I would really recommend you try to take on all of these other one hitter quitters first. All of these, these are all one hitter quitters. And there's one up here, one over here. Take them all out first and then worry about smashing into Carthage. And then as you do, do that with Carthage, you can get some very good agreements with Rome. But anyway, that's about all I have to say in the campaign. We'll talk a little bit more about it in the part 3 section of this video. But now, let's get into the part 2 section where we'll talk about the military of the Lusitani. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the part 2 section of this video where we'll check out the military of the Lusitani. And here we are with one of our general's bodyguardians. Before we talk about him though, I will just once again unfortunately state we are not checking out the navy of the Lusitani. Very poor navy with only few options and it's just not worth the time discussing and adding to these already very long videos. So hope you guys uh, understand that and appreciate it. If you do want to see navies in general covered, I can do a little bit more in-depth video about that so let me know down below. Um, but anyway, right now let's check out the army of the Lusitani. So here we are with our Lusitani Noble Cav. This is one of a few cavalry units you get for your General's Bodyguard. You only get one infantry option for the General's Bodyguard, which is a Noble Spearman unit. But these guys will be your most common and probably your most effective uh, bodyguard you get access to. Quite heavily armored with an armor of 41. Melee attack of 13, defense of 10 charge bonus of 37 but most importantly these guys actually also have javelins they have a missile damage at 23 with an ammunition of 6 and a range of 95 so these guys are actually not just an excellent melee cav unit but also quite good at skirmishing although how's their speed speed is only at 6 so they are a little bit slower than most normal cav units so do keep that in mind but anyway uh, we unfortunately do not do not have a big roster this is it. This is all we have to, for today. So uh, let's check it out anyway, though, and get into it. So now we'll get on to the skirmisher section. So here we have the most basic, the bottom tier of your skirmishers, the Lusitani Slingers. Wow, a heavy cloud must have just went over the sun right now. <laughs> um, these guys are very, very low tier, not special at all. And they don't have anything special about their melee attacks either. So basically only use these guys if you really really need slingers and you got nothing else available skirmishers! we then jump up to the lusitani levy skirmishers these guys are basically in the same boat however they do have a high uh, armor pc damage at 12 and a weapon damage at 16 so i'm guessing these guys use axes in melee uh however the melee attack is still only at five melee defense is at two which is absolutely abysmal I really still would not recommend using these guys in melee unless you absolutely have to use them to 
try and slow down an enemy unit. But since they don't have armor or the slingers, by the way, uh, they'll both get cut down extremely fast. However, we then have the Lusitani ambushers. Now, as you can see, these guys are very stealthy and actually fairly elite even, almost. Um, they have good missile damage at 22, range at 95, which is nice. They have the stalk ability and the snipe ability. So these guys get to move around silently on the battlefield and they get to uh, throw javelins without actually even being seen. So that's a very powerful perk, especially in PvP. So uh, use that if you're doing some online battles. Guerrilla deployment and campaign stealth is also very nice. Uh, their melee stats are still not very good. Only a melee attack at 5, defense at 6. But again, we see the high weapon damage at 15 of armor pen and then 14 weapon damage on its own. So uh, these guys will be very helpful for you to snipe enemy uh, important units like their generals, get behind them, and you can rear charge them into the rear of uh, enemy units, especially like legionnaires. They'll get some kills, but not a lot. Uh, so it's just that low melee attack is really going to hurt them massively. So maybe wait until they're veterans when their melee attack has been increased by XP. That's when you start using them in melee. But now that's it for your skirmishers. Literally, you only have three units of dedicated skirmishers in your army, not including Cav. You do have good AOR units nearby that can help fulfill this though, such as the Balearic Slingers, they are absolute must-have for you. But one thing that is worth keeping in mind is that you have no archers, and you don't get access to them uh, in AOR or mercenary terms for quite a while. So hopefully you don't need to burn down any settlements because you won't be able to do that with skirmishes. You'll have to use other units to do so, which is going to suck for you. But anyway, now let's jump into the swordsman section, which is these units right here. So let's start off with the lowest tier unit that you have here and we'll work it way up, our way up to the highest. We have the Lusitani Light Infantry. These guys are 300 men per unit and an armor of 20, which isn't all that bad considering melee attack of 11 and defense of 7 and decent weapon damage at 26 no armor penetration really um, so these guys are basically your swarming units um, they do have stealth capabilities as you can see they can hide in grass and um, shrubs forest and all that once you move them though they won't be hidden so they don't have the stalk ability unfortunately they do have campaign and uh, campaign stealth and guerrilla deployment so these guys will do a very nice early main battle line for you but as you get into the mid and late campaign, they're going to be extremely weak compared to other main battle lines. So don't use them too late if you can avoid it. Use them as a flanking force, although they do come from the Freeman population. So maybe you do want to use them and just use up that massive amount of pop that you should have with that. Then we move on to the Axe Northern Warriors. Axemen. Now these guys are fairly powerful, um, but they're still kind of mid-tier. Usually Axemen are either fairly like low to mid-tier. Oh, they're very very good and these guys are in the low to mid tier category in my opinion um, they're still very useful though another uh, unit that has 300 men in it an armor of 15 this time not uh, lower than the light warriors bonus versus elephants for some reason but then they have the armor piercing damage of 14 and a weapon damage of 19 that is very high um, that's getting you to a total of 33 pretty powerful um, very damaging, charge bonus of 29, melee defense of 10 and an attack of 9. So these guys are very skilled and they're very damaging with their weapons. Um, however, their morale isn't amazing, although it's okay at 46. But their biggest letdown really is their armor. Only 15, they're going to get decimated by skirmish of fire. And uh, any unit that is very high attack, they will lose to quite quickly. And of course we have the same abilities as the Lusitani Light Warriors. They can hide in grass and forest and all that and they have guerrilla deployment and campaign stealth. Now let's get up to your more elite units though. Melee warriors. Here we have the upgrade of the Lusitani Light Warriors which goes into the Lusitani Heavy Infantry. These guys are very, very useful. They have a melee attack of 15 straight away, a melee defense of 11, weapon damage of 30 and armor 28. Morale of 49 and the same abilities as the Light Warriors in that they can hide uh, in grass, have guerrilla deployment and campaign stealth. Basically, this is what your mid to late game main body line is going to look like. Excellent infantry, very, very aggressive. An attack of 15 is absurd. It's really, really powerful. 
and it's going to get only better as time goes on and these guys get more experience. They look very nice, which is probably also part of their shielding. They have an 11 melee defense, 6 of which comes from their shield value, so these guys should be okay against skirmisher fire for a little while. Uh, but they don't have 300 men, they only have 200, and they don't have any other abilities. And there's no shield wall or anything, so they will get wrecked by skirmishers eventually. Um, but not as easy as other units. Very powerful unit though. Really recommend you use this in a mobile army you're using where you want some stealth capabilities but you also want to have a solid main uh, infantry line for you. Moving on then we have the Lusitani Bear Warriors. One of the best, if not the best unit. I'd, say, I'd actually say it's tied in being the best unit for Lusitani. But um, wow, these guys are really, really amazing. Not only do they look awesome, those bear uh, heads on top of them. Absolutely fantastic. They're a two-handed X-Men unit. So these guys are going to have very good armor penetration. And in fact, they have a AP of 13 on top of a weapon damage of 25. That's a total of 38 weapon damage if uh, all of the original weapon damage actually takes effect when they do hit an enemy unit. They have a melee attack of 17. Insanely high. That's massive. And they have a melee defense of only 5 though, so that is a massive weakness. Their armor is still only at 20 as well, so... These guys are not very good at defending themselves. These guys are basically like Germanic Berserkers, and do they have scareability? They... Do actually, yeah. And they're immune to fear as well themselves, so... Uh, they don't care about any other scary units on the battlefield like uh, Germanic Berserkers. These guys will headbutt them and split them open with these massive axes that they're wielding, which just looks insane. Really, probably one of the most powerful units you have just because of their damage potential. It is massively high. They will get a lot of kills, and if they don't get recharged or hit by skirmisher fire, they'll get hundreds and hundreds of kills. Get them into a, a grind out fight against infantry, and they'll do amazing. Uh, especially if you get them to charge in. A charge bonus of 36 on this unit. That's higher than some low tier cavalry. That's about the same as uh, most skirmisher calf, is around 36. That's how powerful they are on the charge. Use them as much as you can. I can't stress how uh, important they are. But then we come to the elite of the elite. The Lusitani Elite Shock Cavalry. Now look at these guys. These guys look lethal. They do not fuck about. They are here to get the job done, get their kills, and get out. They are incredibly powerful, quite well armored at 35, very good armored actually. Um, melee attack is all the way up at 18. This is without any XP rating by the way, so that's going to skyrocket even faster. Give them one XP rank, they're up to 19. Melee defense is only at 9, which is still fairly low considering they're an elite unit, but it does mean that they'll be able to defend themselves a little bit. Charge bonus is only 19 though. Uh, that's a bit of a letdown for me. I would expect a unit called the Lusitani Elite Shock Infantry to be better on the charge. And so I'd actually like to see that be adjusted. Even if it's in like the mid 20s so it's not too powerful. That would be a little bit more understandable. But 19, I mean, I don't know. Let's compare that to our Light Infantry. We the Lusitani Light Infantry you have a charge bonus of 18. And your elite shock cav have a charge bonus of 19. Now, charge bonus isn't everything for a shock unit, but it is a big part of it. And I would like to see that change, to be honest. But besides that, they have a very good weapon damage at 26, but they have almost no armor penetration. So, again, it's kind of conflicting for a shock unit. Usually, shock units have good armor penetration, so they can actually deal a lot of damage on the charge. Um, but these guys, they're using swords, which is why their um, armor-piercing damage is not very high. And their regular damage is okay, 26, it's not bad. Um, gives you a total of 30 damage uh, if you add in the armor-piercing. But yeah, I would just like to see that uh, charge bonus get adjusted. Either that or the armor-piercing damage. But I don't think you need more armor-piercing. I would just like to see that charge bonus go up a little bit. Uh, and they do have stealth capabilities, by the way. Guerrilla deployment, campaign stealth. Uh, your bear warriors do not, but the Lusitani heavy infantry do. So all of your units, basically, that are melee infantry, have those stealth abilities except for your bear warriors. But the bear warriors don't care. They're too tall and proud, and they're going to come in and smash 
the opposition anyway but that's it for your infantry however you do need to consider that you have a lot of AUR and mercenary units in Iberia that are good swordsmen in fact a lot of your armies will consist of main battle lines of those AOR units uh, I won't cover those units in a video like this I'll do uh, others in the future talking more so about AOR units but it's just worth considering don't uh, feel too bad about these swords being only at five you have a lot more nearby and they're actually almost just as useful if not more useful than some of these units but now we'll skirt around this beautiful Roman villa here by the way I hope you guys like this battle map super nice very looking uh, very cool looking and then we will skirt up to our spearmen now let's go from our lowest tier to our highest tier we have uh, six units of spearmen here so quite spear heavy alrighty and here we are with our first spear unit which is the Lusitani light spearmen these guys are pretty low tier they have 300 men per unit and armor 15 which is okay considering they have 300 men um, but their melee stats are really not too impressive an attack of 6 and a defense of 12 so the defense is okay but um, just because they're so low tier, low morale of 39 these guys are not going to be very good at forming a main battle line for you what they will help you with though is against cavalry and elephants where they have the bonuses of 8 and 7 for each and then they have a decent speed of 3 so these guys you want to place on the wings of your army so they can go help out your own cavalry they have stealth abilities of course which is why they're hiding right here but no stalk ability so they will be spotted once they're moving in grass um, but besides that just a nice low tier spearman unit for you to use definitely useful but not main battle line worthy at least not in my opinion then we upgrade to the Lusitani medium spears and these guys are very strong actually have only a melee attack of 7 which is their weakness but then they bump all the way up to a melee defense of 17 that's very very powerful if we hover over over that we'll see the shield shield value is at seven that's very very powerful these guys will do very good against skirmish of fire they have an armor 25 to help weapon damage of a total of 26 and they have a bonus versus cav and elephants at 10 and again we see the same stealth abilities as the other spearman unit we just checked out these guys are looking very much almost like a 4x greek 4x spearman unit they're heavier than a Thurio Spear, but lighter than a Thorax, just about. Um, they only have 200 men in their unit, though, and no other abilities, no uh, anti-cav abilities or anything like that, which is kind of a shame. I'd like to see one of these units have it, but none of your spears have any abilities, so that is a big shame. Big missed opportunity, but they look amazing. I mean, like, wow, look at that crest on that dude. That lion, or is that a cat or a cougar? I don't, can't even tell. It looks scary, though, no matter what. Look at incredible, very high res, looks amazing. And then we move on to the Lusitani Armored Spears. Now these guys are a step up in just about every single way. Um, and if we compare them side by side, yeah, that's basically all they are. They're just an upgrade in just about every single way. They have an Armored 28 compared to 25 on the Medium Spears. Melee Defense of 18, Attack of 9, uh, Bonus versus Cavern Elephants of 14. These guys are fantastic spears. Uh, put them in a melee grind out against another sword unit, and they will do decent against like low to mid tier units. You obviously don't want them fighting in your entire main battle line, though. Keep them on the wings, support your cab with them, or uh, have them in like a second line, maybe where it's smaller. You only have a few of these units, but they can come in, plug holes in your main battle line until you get help with uh, some proper swordsmen. But wow. Just look at their armor. Looking very nice. Your boy over here has got these pony ponytails ready. He's ready to rock. <laughs> uh, they got helmets, nice shields. Just an excellent unit. Um, but yeah, not really too much to say except everything I said for the medium spears. Except these guys are just better in every single way. So try to get them spears! when you can. Population uh, allowing it to do so, of course. Then we move on to the Lusitani Veteran Warriors. Now these guys technically a bit of a step down from the last unit we just talked about however i thought i would put them up here because they have 300 men in a unit and they're still fantastic they have attack of 8 defense of 16 weapon damage at 28 in total uh bonus versus cavern elephants at 12 and armor at 20 and a base morale of 52 and they have all of the usual stealth abilities that the lusitani have as well uh, and they have 300 men like i said so 
slightly lower tier uh, than the other two spears we just talked about, but they're still very good and have a lot of men in their units. So these guys could definitely help you hold a main battle line if you need them to. But again, the main way these spears are going to excel is in fighting cavalry. Uh, but you could form a main battle line with them if you really wanted and have your bear warriors and axemen go around the flanks and annihilate the enemy. But be quick, because an armor 20 isn't going to buy you a lot of time. Then we move up to the Galici Medium Infantry. Now this is a very interesting unit. Uh, obviously they're very influenced by the Galici, which is basically one of the Celt-Siberian factions to your north. Looking absolutely insane, very impeccable. All of the self capabilities of all the other units. Um, they have very good weapon damage at 28 in total, which is pretty solid considering they're a spear unit. Attack of 8, uh, defense of 16, but they have an armor of 28, which is very impressive. Base morale of 46. Um, just again, we're, we're basically going up the ladder here, just a few stats at a time, and these guys are up there for sure. Um, how are they compared to this other unit though? I guess the, um, the what you call it? What's the name of this unit again? The Lusitani Armored Spears would technically be ahead. Yeah, I guess it would be. So perhaps I should have swapped the Armored Spearmen and the Galich and, uh, these guys around, but that's okay. These guys are still a fantastic unit. They're not the most elite you get access to, but, um, I would definitely rate them as a high tier Barbarian Spearman unit. You have a lot of spears available to you as a Lusitani, which is good, but it's also a bit of a shame because you don't need that many. You only need to have like three options, just about, and here we have six, most of which end up basically nullifying use of the others, so as you upgrade your barracks and buildings and you get access to these guys, you're not really going to need them all that much unless you need them due to population reasons. Um, but anyway, moving on from the Galicia unit, we move on. To the Lusitani Noble Unit. This is the only General's Bodyguard you get access to that's infantry. Armor of 38, melee attack of 9, defense of 18, total weapon damage of 28 and a bonus versus cavalry and elephants of 14. These guys are the elite of the elite for your spearmen. Very solid spear unit. Again, we're just seeing some amazing designs on the uh, uniforms, the weapons, the shields. Like, look at how so many of these shields are different. It's just It just blows my mind. Um, but these guys are also uh, able to use stel stealth capabilities like all of these other units. But yet again, no stalk ability. So be careful if you start moving them in open ground. They will uh, get caught out and spotted. But that's it for your infantry. Not a massive amount. You have some decent variety in swords and in spears. But, but considering you'll be fighting Carthage and uh, Rome in your campaign, at least you should be. That's when you're going to be seeing that you really don't have much variety at all. So it kind of depends on who you're going up against. And obviously your skirmishes are a massive issue for you. Alright, we're almost done. Now let's get into our cavalry and then we have the verdict section. So now we have the Lusitani Light Cavalry. Very light tier, uh, low tier uh, skirmisher cavalry unit. Although they're actually pretty good in melee. Attack of 13, defense of 12. Their only main issue really is an armor of 13, which is pretty pathetic. Uh, but they're very fast with a good speed of 8. So these guys can definitely be useful in your army. Just don't let them get hit by anything, because they'll die quite quickly. Noble cavalry! Then we have your Lusitani Noble Cav. This is the same Noble Cav unit, though, as the General's Bodyguard we just checked out at the beginning. So uh, we won't check out these stats again. Just remember, this is a pretty elite tier skirmisher cav unit that you should use in your armies it will help you out get a lot of free kills but now that's it for your skirmisher cav let's move on to your melee cav here we have your lusitani heavy cavalry now these guys are one of two melee cav options you get access uh, get access to that are not mercenary or aor based you do have mercenary and aor options in your area so don't be too deflated that you only have two melee cav units and in fact, all of your cav units, all four of them, can be pretty good in a melee. Uh, so don't be too harsh on it. However, this unit, it's pretty solid. It is a little bit slower with a medium kind of speed of 6. But the armor of 38, an attack of 10, defense of 13. These guys are just a fantastic, very solid, high tier melee cavalry unit. You can use them to recharge enemy unit formations as, as well if you want them to. Um, but... You don't need them to, just use them to decimate enemy cavalry 
and uh, wipe out those pesky Numidian skirmisher cav units that Carthaginians will bring against you. And then the last unit we have to talk about is the Lusitani Elite Medium Cavalry Unit. Now these guys are basically the same as the Lusitani Heavy Cav. These guys are designed for extended melee engagements and rear charging enemy formations. Uh, in fact, more so just extended melee. Um, they do have some better uh, abilities than the Heavy Cavalry Unit we just talked about, but it kind of depends on what you want. So these guys have a higher attack, but the Heavy Cav have higher defense. The Heavy Cav have higher charge bonus, 48, but these guys have a higher speed of 7. Uh, they both have the same armor rating though, so that will help out. It's basically up to you how you want to uh, use these guys. Uh, do you want the higher speed or do you want slightly better defense? Um, and by the way, both units have different bonuses. This unit has a bonus versus cavalry. This is your heavy cav unit. And then your elite medium cav unit has a bonus versus infantry. So take from that what you will. But the bottom line is they're both very elite, good medium, I mean, uh, not medium, sorry, good melee cavalry units. And they will wipe out a lot of other mid to higher tier cav they go up against. The very elite Carthaginian cav will give them a run for their money though, so be careful of that. Get, uh, get your spears involved and help them out there. But anyway, that is it for the military of the Lusitani, everyone. So now let's get to the part three section of this video where we'll check out the verdict for the Lusitani. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that is it for the Lusitani. Let's very quickly wrap up the verdict and then that is it. Uh, first off, diplomacy, again, is pretty much going to be non-existent for you early on except for maybe one or two factions. Uh, however, Expanding on diplomacy a little bit, my recommendation to you is that you fight Carthage. It'll be a lot easier to take on than Rome. And then you ally with Rome because the Romans will love you for fighting Carthage if they are at war with Carthage. And that's a caveat. That's the main thing you need to look out for. Do not go to war with Carthage until they are fighting Rome. If you do that, then the campaign will be a lot easier. If you want a little bit of a challenging campaign, don't do that. Fight Carthage early on, maybe even fight Rome early on if you like, uh, and just don't try to time your wars to help you at the most. So that's okay if you want to do that. In fact, I might even recommend it to help uh, make your campaign a bit more interesting. But it is a really big deal. If you time attacking Carthage right, you can get all of Iberia that they have in Iberia at least basically for free because their armies won't be there. They'll be busy in Sicily or Italy, hopefully. And that's my main point in the verdict, really. Uh, the next thing is, of course, your military is kind of lacking in some areas. It's not terrible, but you will have to use mercenary and AOR units to make up for certain uh, areas that you fall through, mainly skirmishing. Uh, that's a really major area that you need help with. It wouldn't be terrible if you could get access to some better units that can hold a main front line for you, such as hoplites or something like that. Something with a, a shield wall. Um, your Lusitani heavy warriors will be decent at it, but they won't last for a massive amount of time and they will get cut down by other barbarian factions over time. They might win their engagements but it's not as guaranteed as say a hoplite holding a position for a very long amount of time. Um, that's where it's going to be a little bit more scary for you and they will get cut down by enemy skirmishes. And then the last point to reiterate of course is that you have a very big opportunity for your population to be very explosive. So. Um, don't be afraid to recruit a lot of units, get them flowing, because basically once you take a city, as long as it's in Iberia, you will have a good amount of population to recover. Um, and then hopefully once you start expanding out of Iberia, you can get some more foreigner population class units, and then that will help you um, replenish your armies even faster than normal as well. So overall, it's not looking too bad. The campaign is... A little bit easy but it's also a little bit difficult in some regards for example your army will get outclassed by a lot of others but then you will have a lot of opportunities that other factions don't have so it's a little bit of a 50 50 in terms of how many points you have for being uh for it being difficult and other points for it being easy before i give the difficulty rating though i will uh say one thing for the reforms they occur at imperium level four after turn 90 occurs however as i've said before and i'll say it again I won't be covering what units you get in the reforms in these kinds of videos. Instead, what I will be doing is doing specialized reform videos for factions or for groups of factions in the near future, probably once the next DEI update starts uh, popping off. So keep an eye out for those if you do want to know a little bit more about the reforms 
these videos are just to give you a broad overview of the faction, uh, the details. Uh, not all details are supposed to be included, at least that's not the idea or intent for me behind these videos. But then of course we get to the difficulty rating and what is it for the Lusitani? Well, they have a decent campaign position but it's also a little bit risky being a one here to quitter. You have Carthage, you have Rome, you'll have to fight one or the other eventually. It is going to be a little bit rough later on or in the mid game because of that. So when I take everything into account, in my opinion, this is a pretty solid 5 out of 10. It's an average campaign. You have some tough stuff to deal with, but then you have some easy stuff that gives you a really big break. For example, the population is a massive one that helps you out a lot in your campaigns. Um, just don't abuse it too much. Try not to uh, waste too many units because if you do that, no matter how many pops you have, you can run out eventually and it will cause you massive issues. But yeah, 5 out of 10. Lusitania are a solid faction. A lot of fun. Uh, maybe seeing another extra unit or two to make them a little bit more unique would be fun. Uh, at least to contrast them against the other Iberians. But then you do have to keep into account that the Lusitania have a lot of uh, Iberian AOR units nearby. So that does help diversify their roster anyway. Uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to uh, check out the channel in the very near future. We will start uploading the head-to-head -head campaign where I'll be playing as the Lusitani, so keep a good eye out for that. Discord link is down below if you want the latest information on what's going on with me and the channel and on when videos are being uploaded. Uh, but anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one.